that you like severance videos. <laughs> Nautilus files here and I can't get enough severance and it looks like I'm not the only one so I'm glad for the company. I've posted three videos about severance characters so far and well you guys have made it clear the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Seriously though I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. I'm humbled and inspired to continue making character analysis videos because of it so thank you. Now I did make a video about the MDR department where I talk about each member but very briefly. I think we're going to devote this entire video to one character eventually covering all four members of the MDR gang and who better to start with than Lumen's golden child Heli R. So before we begin I am obliged to warn you we will be talking about very specific story content that you might not want to see if you have not watched Severance or you started but haven't finished up the series yet. Massive spoilers on the horizon. Consider yourself warned. Don't worry, when you're all caught up, come back. I'll be right here holding the elevator for you. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's dive. Kelly is introduced to us as a newly minted, severed employee who wakes up bleary-eyed and confused on the conference room table. This is how she is born into the world, like a newborn deer, fresh-faced, wobbly, and ready to be put to work. I love this as an introduction because it puts us in the position of someone who is new to being severed and allows us to see just how jarring the experience must be for anyone who is crazy or desperate enough to do this. Kelly's experience at Lumen is the one the audience is meant to relate to first, with her character acting as our eyes and ears for the first few episodes, showing us just how warped Lumen actually is on the inside to someone who hasn't been fully brainwashed. There are a few things we learn about Heli straight away. One is that when it comes to the adrenaline response, you know, fight or flight, Heli will choose fight first and maybe flight later. Mark is tasked with her orientation and tries his absolute best to calm her as he goes through the protocols, which seem to be designed to test her severed state's integrity first, and while well, Heli's just not feeling it. And that leads to the second thing we learn about Heli right away. Two strikes, the pitch, swing and a long drive! Heli's got an arm. Ultimately, what we learn here is that Heli is a fighter. She's stubborn, determined, and is not the kind of person who takes kindly to being forced into doing anything she does not want to do. When I try to analyze a character, I think the most important thing to look for or to figure out is what does this character want? What are they trying to achieve? And how do they go about getting what they want? Much like in real life, this tells you so much about who a person is. The entire sequence of events surrounding Heli's intro are meant to establish the answer for us. Kelly wants one thing, freedom. Get out of Lumen or die trying. I know it's early in the video, but uh, let's get into some speculation, shall we? There are some theories out there about Heli's name being intentionally chosen for its meaning. This could be pure coincidence, but the name Helena originates from the Greek, and it means shining one or bright one, possibly meaning that she is a source of light to others, showing the truth path or the way forward. I don't think it's a coincidence that the director gives us a shot of her drawing a lamp here. If this choice was made with the meaning in mind, then it could indicate her purpose in the story as a future key player in the MDR team's plans to escape Lumen. Or it could be the name her father chose for her because he sees her as the light of the future of the Egan family business. Does her name actually mean something? Was it just a coincidence? How many licks does it take? The world may never know. It's interesting to note that the name of the company, Lumen, sounds like the word Lumen, which is a measurement of brightness, another reference to light that could have some greater symbolic meaning. Oh, we see you, Seventh Show writers. Kelly never stops trying to escape working at Lumen, and each time she tries and fails, she comes back with a new plan more drastic than the first. Her desperation drives her to threaten to chop off her fingers using a paper slicer in an effort to force Lumen to release her, and it doesn't go well. The problem for Heli is that she cannot quit, ever. Audi simply won't allow it. After the choppy finger fiasco fails, Koble has Heli sit down with a personalized video made by her Audi, wherein her Audi tries to explain to Heli that there's no way she's getting out of her job. I am a person. You are not. Now that's what I call gangster. You're not a person. Now this is important because it's this perspective that is the foundational idea behind what Lumen hopes to accomplish. The idea that a severed person's life has no real intrinsic value, that a severed person is merely a machine meant to fulfill a need and to be discarded once the job is done. This is the excuse used to validate treating a severed person like they're subhuman. It is because we see life from the severed person's perspective in the story that it becomes clear to us that this idea 
is wrong. This revelation is undoubtedly devastating for Heli, not to mention having this played in front of the rest of her department mates. Heli realizes that her Audi is her own worst enemy, or that she is her own worst enemy. Her Audi is like an evil twin that is bent on ruining her life. Heli starts to become a problem for Kobol, who decides that she needs to spend some time with Mr. Milchik getting re-educated. We see an initially obstinate Heli, being seemingly broken down by Milchik, forces her to recite a pre-written apology until the polygraph indicates she believes what she's saying. For a short while, it seems like it worked, but this is Heli we're talking about here. She's essentially an unstoppable force. Refusing to accept defeat, she turns to what would be the last possible option, hastily attempting to take her own life rather than be trapped at Lumen. Now, I was shocked by this choice at first, but after thinking about it, I realized that in the beginning of the story, Heli's Innie may not have fully understood that quitting for her means a kind of death. After she sees that video of her Audi, she concludes that her options are to be a prisoner, her entire perceived life, or die. In the beginning of the Mark and Heli story, they seem like total opposite personalities that would always be at odds. Heli looks at Mark as a pushover who is unwilling to challenge the BS Lumen piles onto him. Over the course of the season, Heli makes marathon attempts at escaping Lumen. The two begin to bond as they start to understand each other. Mark stands up for Heli on a few occasions and even takes the heat for her. This starts out as him just being concerned for her, but Mark then begins to express that he truly cares about her, but he keeps it as low-key as possible because Lumen doesn't allow for any fraternizing. And of course, Dylan is reading the vibes well before either of them are aware of their own feelings. Heli's presence in MDR has a positive influence on Mark, pushing him to think for himself, acknowledge the hypocrisy at Lumen, and question what is actually going on. This ends up being one of several factors that pushes Mark towards the transformation he needs to undergo in his own story arc. We'll talk about him in another video. From Heli's perspective, Mark showed great care for her despite her shenanigans, and I think she grew to respect him because of it. This became the seed for a budding romance. Now, I have no idea how this will play out in the long run. We know Mark learns that Miss Casey, his supposedly deceased wife, is alive at Lumen. I can see a storyline where Mark and Heli are together, but only if it turns out Gemma's personality is truly gone, and Miss Casey is just a ghost left behind by the severance procedure. We don't really know anything about Miss Casey as a character yet, so there's a limit to how much sympathy we're expected to feel for her as an audience. The biggest story reveal related to Heli is that she is in fact an Egan. We find out this juicy detail in the season finale when she awakens at a pro-severance event. She's expected to give a speech that her Audi was scheduled to give, proclaiming the virtues of being severed. It seems that Heli is a part of a project meant to prove that the severance is safe and effective, and this will pave the way for broader acceptance and application. Why else would an Egan allow his daughter to undergo the procedure if it was so dangerous? Before she goes on stage to give her speech, we meet her father, James Egan. Her conversation with Pops reveals that her Audi has a lot to gain personally by agreeing to this project. She is to be the heir of the Egan Empire, should things work out. There is also a hint dropped that the Egans are hoping to expand severance to all of mankind. These are grand goals, and Heli is down with this. This indicates that Audi Heli is not only gangster, but very driven by power. I would guess that Heli probably despises her Audi at this point, so her decision to try and blow up Lumen by telling the world the truth comes easy. Unfortunately for Heli, Mr. Milchik pulls a Milchik and throws a bucket of cold water on the party just in time to prevent her from finishing her big reveal. Still, so many questions. One thing that is burning a hole in my brain is the fact that James says that he showed the first chip to Heli when she was a little girl, and Heli looks to be in her early to mid 20s. This would mean that the chip was around for about 20 years. Another question, is James chip? And what about the rest of the Egans and the board? Are they chipped too? The biggest question left unanswered specific to Audi, Heli, is what will she do when she sees what her Innie did on that stage during her big speech in the final episode? We know that Audi Heli doesn't give a rats about her Innie and doesn't even recognize her as a person. Now that Heli has done her job and has no reason to return to the severed floor at Lumen, will she change her opinion at all about the whole severance project? At first I thought, there's no way she changes, but I think it's worth considering because one of the points this show often makes is that a severed person's consciousness is divided into two, but the procedure cannot split the subconscious part of the psyche. This would mean that a severed person can still access the same subconscious as their Audi side and be affected by it, as in the case of Irving. This could be the catalyst for an uncharacteristic change and major turn for Heli 
if this is true. I just hope her story is not done. The writers have invested too much into this character for her to fade away into the background at this point. Either way, Heli's role as the fire starter is an important one, and the way she manages to be defiant and endearing at the same time makes her a compelling character to watch. Very curious to see where the writers take this character next. Let me know what you think is going to happen to Heli in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions. So, you made it to the end of the video like a real MVP. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. As I mentioned at the start, I'm going to cover all of the characters in the MDR crew in their own separate videos so I can take a deeper dive on them. I'm also considering going into some of the theories surrounding the show's future. If there is some interest in that, let me know. For now, take care, be well, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.